plasma is the fourth state of matter. And essentially what it is, is if you take a gas and fracture it through heat, it breaks up the atoms that form the gas. And when this happens, the electrons break free. And when they break free, they start getting excited and they emit photons. These are small particles of light which illuminate everything. And as this happens, more and more electrons break free of the atoms, bump into each other, create almost like a chain reaction. And as this occurs, they produce their own magnetic fields. So in other words, they're getting bigger and bigger, these seas of electrons, until eventually you can actually see plasma as like a ball of light. The Northern Lights are a really good example of this solar energy, this energy coming in from our sun, which comes as these bursts of plasma energy. And as that energy from our sun comes in and it, it hits the magnetic field of the Earth, it spirals it down through those magnetic lines and it shows up as these beautiful lights and colors, as, as different photons come off uh, from that spiraling motion of that plasma coming in around the magnetic field lines. In the plasma universe, deep space is permeated with giant filaments of electrons and ions. These filaments twist together in space due to electromagnetic forces, and some of their vast energy is then converted into matter, and new galaxies are the eventual result. The intricate spiral arms of galaxies are said to reveal further interactions of the plasma filaments. The universe, we could say, is, for all intent and purposes, plasma. So plasma is a very interesting state of matter. So basically, we first realize matter clearly can be solid, and then clearly can be liquid. Uh, these, these are two different phases of matter. And then it can be a gas, right? Later we discover, okay, it can be a gas. And then those are a third state of matter. And then eventually we realize when there's enough energy in a gas, it becomes a different state of matter that we call plasma, which is a, a gas that has a lot of electrons in it and that's very energized. And when it's in that state, it behaves a little bit like a gas, a little bit like a fluid, and a little bit like a solid. It has all these different elements in it, so it's its own state. But in fact, the universe is made out of 99.999% plasma. And the rest that's not plasma is basically plasma that's cooled off and has made things that are more like what we call solids, fluids, and gases. What we're discovering is that plasma it has all kinds of self-organizing behaviors. It suggests that there is a information flow um, that's going through the system so that the system will tend to certain uh, organizing principle. For instance, we're discovering that vortices in a plasma can organize to make like very specific crystalline geometry and so that plasma can self-organize and create very specific dynamics. Self-organization is an example of the concept of emergence, which occurs when an entity is observed to have properties its parts do not have on their own. Properties or behaviors which emerge only when the parts interact. Self-organization occurs in many physical, chemical, biological, robotic, and cognitive systems. It is often triggered by seemingly random fluctuations, which can be conceptualized as islands of predictability in a sea of chaotic unpredictability. I love these images from the Hubble telescope that show us how the, the, there's all this plasma and energy connecting from different nebulae to galaxies and super clusters of galaxies. And, and you know, as you scan back and see the whole 
infrastructure, right? That whole network, it is like an organism, you know, and it's all connected throughout the universe. And the more we look at those images uh, from Hubble, it shows us how uh, the similar images that we see of, of that infrastructure resembles the neurons in our brain. It resembles the um, circulatory system, you know, and the blood flow system and, and all of this and, and the plasma that flows through our veins. There's plasma flowing through the universe. So it is, again, we are the reflection of the whole macrocosm in us. And maybe it's the other way around. Maybe the macrocosm is a reflection of our form. This um, state of energy, you got to ask, where is it coming from? It's one thing to say, oh, it all came out of a Big Bang. Well, the Big Bang was in a little point uh, of the Planck scale, right? You got to ask, well, is there more of this energy, right, in the Planck scale everywhere? And that's what we're discovering is that actually the plasma we see in the universe is actually coming from a deeper level or a finer level of plasma that we could call the Planck plasma, right? Which is Planck particles oscillating like a plasma, but billions of times smaller than the atom, meaning the, the grain resolution of the plasma, the, the grain frequency of the plasma is so small and the frequency is so high, we can't tell it's there. We're discovering it now. Um, and it's really a Planck plasma, the base of, of the structure of space from which the more gross plasma, the more uh, larger grain plasma that are made out of protons and electrons and all this emerge from to produce our universe. While debate on the validity and significance of the plasma universe theory continues, some scientists like physicist Wal Thornhill have developed distinct but complementary theories which share some similarities with plasma universe concepts. Based on observation and experiment, the electric universe model unifies the nuclear forces, magnetism and gravity as manifestations of an electric force. The standard model of cosmology is based on the idea that gravity is the controlling force in the universe. The electric universe takes a different view, and that is it is the electric force and the electric force alone which governs not only the universe, but also everything within it, including us. The electric universe has a different picture of the connection between all things both at the biological level right down to the subatomic, which is not recognized by present day science. So the electric universe theory take uh, for account the electric nature of plasma interaction in our universe. For instance, we know that there is very strong uh, electric filaments that connect the Earth and the Sun that are constantly transferring gigawatts of power, you know, in between planets and stars. And, you know, this electrical nature of the plasma dynamics and the plasma interaction between systems in our universe is typically ignored by current cosmology. So the electric universe cosmology brings this forward as something fundamental and important in understanding the dynamics of our, of our universe and our world. In itself, as well, have the possibility to birth a whole new level of technology where we're extracting energy or electricity literally from our universe. And so, um, you know, it, it has very important consequences for humanity. Most people think of electricity as flowing through wires into appliances and uh, powering motors, lighting the home. Uh, in fact, it's used for almost everything uh, in our daily lives. But lightning is also a form of electric current in plasma. 
And that type of behavior of lightning is the kind of thing that we see in space. That is a form of plasma which occurs in a more dense medium. What happens is that the energy in that lightning bolt is sufficient to strip electrons off neutral atoms so that they separate positive and negative charge. Once you do that, you have a plasma. In space, when the space uh, age began, it was discovered that space is full of plasma. Somehow or another, the universe is full of particles which have been separated from their partners. The electrons and the protons have separated. Those particles are now being charged subject to the action of magnetic fields. And that means that their behavior is quite different to that flowing in a wire. 